Hello players and welcome to your old pal Angry Joe's Top 10 Worst Games of 2010. Or rather the games that make me the most angry! Number 10. No. Ah! Risen. Take your pick between all of the notoriously bad RPGs that have been ported to the Xbox 360 from the PC, Divinity 2, Two Worlds, Gothic 4, and this title, Risen. All of these games deserve to be on some worst of list, but the Xbox 360 port of Risen that was released in February 2010 was a mess unfinished, with just the right amount of design flaws that are annoying, but not enough to get you to turn off the game. You keep trying to press through in order to see if you could squeeze out any ounce of fun of the I, game. You close your inventory screen and an animal starts to beat the out of you, which spins you around and now you don't know where you go, so you gotta do it all over again. What a piece of shit. That's what it is! By the end, you barely have anything to show for your efforts. Aimless, uninteresting, repetitive, and frustrating combat with a completely useless map. Your experience may have varied on the PC as I got a lot of flack over the low score that I gave the game. But in my opinion, regardless of your version, this isn't an RPG that anyone will remember fondly. Especially when some of the quests have you sweeping the floors. Number 9 Napoleon Total War Now, Napoleon is an upgrade over 2009's Empire Total War, which was a complete disaster. Sega bit off way more than they could chew with that particular game. So they quickly, within a span of less than a year, released Napoleon Total War. But it's more like an expansion. And while all of the improvements to the game are appreciated and welcome, the core element that was wrong with Empire is still wrong with this game. The AI remains broken. And until Creative Assembly can fix it, the Total War series is in danger. Now, Shogun 2 is right on the horizon. And my only hope for my favorite strategy franchise is that they will have spent the time addressing all of the technical and AI concerns, along with all of these new fancy graphics and shiny polish that has been shown off so far. Come on, Shogun 2, I'm counting on you. Number 8 Alpha Protocol Why? Oh, why, Sega? Did you let some seriously misguided managers and team leads run this game into the ground? It was a fucking pro concept, an espionage RPG, something unique, something new, with massive potential. How? How then did it turn into an ugly and generic mess of a game? Bugs, slow loading textures, questionable design choices, ineffectual combat, and unbelievable AI, the list goes on. Alpha Protocol's only saving grace is its interesting choices within the story and the excellently done dialogue system. Despite all this, I played Alpha Protocol several times and enjoyed parts of it. I want you to understand that. I haven't sold it or even traded it in. But we are all gonna have to wait until Deus Ex 3 to see this sort of concept done justice. Alpha Protocol just came up short. Secret agent. <laughs> right. What the fuck? Number seven. Tony. Iron Man 2. Tony, how bad is this? I mean, really. I'll tell you on the plane. Come on. 
Iron Man 2 may have been a huge hit at the box office, but its movie licensed game was a series of baffling design choices and minimal effort in an attempt to cash in on the movie's popularity. Broken combat, ugly graphics, and repeat missions made this a frustrating game that I had no business expecting anything good out of. That is, until the developers promised it wouldn't suck. They said it themselves, and that they learned from the first terrible Iron Man licensed game. They wouldn't make the same mistake. Yeah, I'd rather take a repulsor blast to the face than play this shit again. How can you have your emphasis on Iron Man and War Machine and not even put in a cooperative mode? That was what the entire movie was about, learning to cooperate. I guess they knew what we all knew, that if they did put co-op, it wouldn't have made up for all the rest of the game, so fuck it. Let's just put that money into the terrible in-game CGI explaining some awful tie-in story. Fucking movie license game, stop making me review these! Jerks! Assholes! Who's gonna pay me back for this shit? Number six. Final Fantasy XIV Online. Oh man, my friend Spoonie called this one. After getting some time with the game at PAX, he had some pretty harsh words for the title. And from what I saw, I completely agreed with him. But there were so many out there that dismissed his comments. Now look at what the final result of Final Fantasy XIV's release has become. Major publications blasting the game, saying it's at least another six to nine months before it's ready for prime time. And it's quote, it's impossible to recommend to anyone in its current state. The kindest thing that could be said about this MMO is that it has a good intro movie. It falls flat at every turn. It isn't worth the hassle. Since the game's release, Square Enix themselves have sent at least two apologies to their customers, recognizing the poor quality of the game, asking for patience, and announcing free trial extensions of its terrible game. What's worse, and why it gets bumped up a few spots on my list, is how it clearly hurt Square Enix financially, so much so that Square has had to reshuffle its game release lineup, pushing back one of my most anticipated games, Deus Ex, into fucking next year, 2012. Won't we be all dead by then? Thanks a lot, Final Fantasy XIV, you fucking piece of shit. You were so bad, you hurt good games that have nothing to do with you, you jerk. Number 5 Star Trek Online This is a sore spot for me, an open wound. Of all the games on this list, I wanted this game to just be good, damn it! Why does my life suck so bad? Why do you have to fuck up Star Trek? For this game, I changed my entire views on MMOs. Fifteen dollars? That's bullshit! But what the hell? It's Star Trek, right? I gotta support it. I was conned. This isn't Star Trek. It's boring wave after wave of the same enemy ships and dumbed down Starfleet Command combat mixed in with boring ground combat. Stand around in the open and shoot each other until one of you falls down. You jammed a game into an engine that wasn't designed for it. It's in skinned and skinned everything in Star Trek clothing. You cannot do that. The things that make Star Trek Star Trek aren't in the game. Exploration, going where no man has gone before, and finding shit that's actually interesting. Deep diplomatic missions with branching dialogue choices and multiple ways to approach missions. But no, instead it's just blast this thing with phasers until it dies. Rinse and repeat. I want Cryptic to abandon the Star Trek license so someone else can do a Star Trek MMO the justice that it deserves. Give us back our Star Trek. Fire! 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 Fire everything! All batteries, fire!
Number four. It's four hours long. Four hours. Kane and Lynch two. I'm sick of games ending so f***ing poorly! Stop it! Stop pissing us off! Four hours? Four fucking hours for sixty dollars? This game had none of the original's rough charm. The dynamic between the characters was gone. The entire thing felt rushed, only to culminate in the biggest fuck you ending of 2010. No, not the complete 180 endings of most bad finales where you're scratching your head. No, this one had the balls to just say, fuck it, for real, game's over. Thanks for your money, sucker. What happened to Kane and Lynch? I don't know. Who the fuck cares? We got your money already? What are you going to do about it, huh? Just play the multiplayer we carried over from the last game. My God! And how in the hell is your franchise game shorter than a game that you make a free downloadable cameo in? Hey, well, would you look at that? Kane and Lynch have actually been in a good game. You can play through the entire Laura Croft game as Kane and Lynch and spend four times as long playing it than the entire Dog Days game. Twelve hours. And what's crazy is this game had no business being made in the first place. No one was in the streets crying out for this game. Seriously, a huge waste of time and talent from a studio when they could have been giving us the next Hitman. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. What the f***? A 6 out of 10? A f***ing 6 out of 10? F*** me! I cannot believe who the f*** does this mother f think he is! He is so bad! Jeff, you're fired. F*** you. Hey, that wasn't very nice. You. Number three. Fable three. I gave you top 32 reasons why this game sucks, and you guys responded with so many more. Fable three was a huge disappointment. Cranked out in like less than a year from Fable two, it fixed none of the issues fans were complaining about in the original, and instead disregarded its fan base and proceeded to fix things that didn't need to be fixed, only to put together something that barely resembles Peter's original vision of the greatest RPG of all time. I'm trying to make Fable two the greatest role-playing game of all time again. So, what I'm trying to do is create the greatest role-playing game of all time, and I'm to create the perfect role-playing game. Okay, so, so I have to just ask you, so how, how have you done it? What, how does it work? Well, we've redesigned the laws of physics and the universe. Dumbed down to insanely simple levels, the game no longer has any strengths. The greatest innovation it was touting this year was becoming king and ruling a kingdom and weapon morphing. Well, first, the weapon morphing was a sham, possibly turning your favorite weapon into something you didn't like, and only after you did some stupid quests clearly designed to sell more copies of the game. And as for the king making, it didn't feel as epic as it should have. And it turned the game from an action game into a A and B lame choice simulator on a calendar of 365 games that was really just four or five in-game days, ending 
abruptly with a little sequence. Happy what? I, I thought I had like fucking 125 days left, you fucking asshole. Give me back my days. It leaves you unprepared for the end game unless you played it in a very particular way for an extended period of time before you got to this point. I've had enough of Fable. Please, God, I don't know what I'll do if I hear about a Fable 4 announcement. No more. This is no longer even the game you intended it to be. So, what I'm trying to do is create the greatest role-playing game of all time. And I'm to create the perfect role-playing game. Number two. They hit the field and it's game over. Final Fantasy XIII. Uh-oh. Then let's run away. Ciao! For me, Final wait, Fantasy XIII hey, was the worst way I could have been introduced to this series. Years of hearing about all the Final Fantasies and the masses of devoted fans it has, I wanted to know what all the damn fuss was about, so I jumped in. And promptly jumped the hell out. Someone had not only peed in the proverbial pool, they shat in it too. And now they were happily flinging their feces at its own devoted fans. The battle system was redone to move at a faster pace, but took out most of the strategy. The open world exploration element was removed in favor of putting people on a linear track fable style. Supposedly 50 hours later, the game turns into the most amazing game you've ever played. But who wants to put up with 50 hours of boring shit to get there? I quit playing around the time they wanted me to go to some whiny kid's village. I couldn't even finish an Angry Joe review of it. I had to watch Sean suffer through the entire game for me. Between this and Final Fantasy XIV Online, I think Square Enix Final Fantasy franchise is in serious trouble. Hopefully for its fans sake, it can break free of its immediate past. This is it. The top game of 2010 that pissed me off. The worst of the bunch. Number one. Sonic fucking Free Riders! Of all the games on this list, none of them pissed me off and affected my health the way this game did. I still have nightmares about this game. I hear that effing theme song in my head mocking me, reminding me of my time with it. Imagine this, take a bad Sonic game, make it worse, then turn it into a bad racing game that you can't control worth a shit, and do your best to make every part of it nauseating. I feel sick. The reason why I gave this game such a low score, my lowest score of all time, is how it ended up making me and all of my friends feel after just one lap, one single lap. We were all sick to our stomachs. The game is hazardous to your health. Stay away. Destroy all copies on sight. That's an order. So that's it. 
that's it, my personal top 10 list. These are games that I've had personal experience with, either uh, playing a little bit of it or reviewing it in full. And I wanna know which in order from one to 10 are your personal worst or most disappointing games of 2010. Let me know in the comments. I for sure know there are others released in 2010 that aren't on this list. A few of you pointed out some especially bad games that you would like for me to cover. Ones that are fucking terribly bad. Ones that would send me into a rage. And that is why I'll list those here as games that I never want to play. Saw 2. From the horror movie franchise that just won't die, now it's spread its tentacles into gaming with this sequel to the first really bad movie licensed game. No, never. Clash of the Titans. Based off the Hollywood remake, we have yet again another notoriously bad movie licensed game that has been universally panned. Again, no, never. Naughty Bears, a game where you have cute little bears do really fucked up things to each other. Apparently, the game does something really fucked up to you while you play. It's god awful, so hell no, never. Fighters Uncaged. This game has made almost every top 10 worst games of 2010 I have seen across the internet. Notoriously bad for not functioning the way it was designed. It is complete crap. Unless you're an old dude. In which case it makes you look pretty badass like you could throw down in an MMA fight. And finally, Adrenaline Misfits. A game that's a blatant ripoff of Sonic Freeriders? Only I have been told it is worse. Not possible. Oh, not possible. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck those games. I'm never playing them. So there. Oh, and stay tuned as I'll reveal the top 10 best games of 2010, as well as my top 10 most anticipated games of 2011 this year. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. Get out of here! I want your soul!